Right then guys, so we're back on at the Dexter. This is now episode three, starting to get everything put back together. Um, today I've been working on putting these coolant hoses back in place uh, after installing a new water pump there. So I'm ready to get the front scoop uh, grill shroud that goes up the front here get that bolted back on and then we can get the bonnet reinstalled as I've given both those bits of bodywork a nice lick of paint and refreshed all the seals where needed so I'm just having a quick look at how the bonnet is to begin with as you can see the inside's pretty dirty and the original rubber seal and rivets are well, the rivets are still there, but the rubber seal's totally perished. So I've bought a replacement kit for that. And I'll be changing the seal out once I've done the paint on this bonnet. Both emblems will need a bit of fettling as well. And ideally painted internally with the Ford Orange to match how they should have been originally. And I'll drill out all those rivets there and replace them with new ones. So that should be done after the paint work so the rivets stay nice and silver. Just a quick look at this uh, front scoop here. As you can see, I've got new hardware on the grills. So they are looking nice and fresh. And I've painted the scoop and installed the new seal strip here with rivets, split rivets. So that's gonna help stop the bonnet rattling and keep the water out So as you can see, I've now got the radiator put back in place, got the water pump fitted to the timing case there with the fan belt on and I've got the gasket face on the cylinder head cleaned up there. So I've got the inside of this thermostat housing all cleaned out the best I can of loose debris and I've got replacement gaskets for this face and the thermostat face as well. So I'll be getting those installed, weather's not so great so the camera angles might not be too good but <laughs> I'm just going to get it done and then come back once it's all put together. So I've now got the thermostat housing in place, just need to move that uh, jubilee band down and tighten that up. Got the new thermostat in the housing and I'm now going to put on the little reducer piece here that goes from the thermostat to the radiator. So I've just been having a look at this uh, water pump 
as you can see here the new one is provided with a gasket and bolts already fitted but the top bolt here is in fact too long and bottoms out in the housing here so I'm gonna have to remove this whole setup and trim the end off this bolt and the center boss here on the water pump uh, shaft here which is for the cooling fan is slightly too wide for the original center bore of the fan so I've just got these blades laid out here as you can see the lower one I have already trimmed and marked out on the second one here the amount that I'm wanting to remove so that they'll fit within the shrouding and the super dexter fan will suit the dexter shrouding so I've now got the two new fan blades installed in place under the new water pump with the new fan belt and new cooling hoses all also installed it's really starting to come back together now and ready to start putting the bodywork back on so I've now got the front shroud on and all the cooling hoses connected up with the new filler cap as well so happy with how this is starting to look now really coming together So as you would have seen there in the last video, I have removed this steering column casting as it has the inner race for the steering bearings and the easiest way to remove that was to drive it out from the back side. Um, so I've managed to get that race removed now and this casting can go back in place and I'll get the new steering column bearings installed. Now the gasket itself is still in alright condition so I'm just going to reuse this for the moment as it's only stopping water getting in really and a little splash of oil if that but I'm not too concerned about that so pop all these little retaining tabs back on in the same order and then tighten all the bolts down. installed there and I'll thread the inner shaft, the upper shaft on the spline shaft section and once it's halfway down where the retaining groove matches up with the race then I'll install the bearings So I'm just going to put a bit of grease into this race here before I install the ball bearings and then I'll smear a bit onto the upper race before I install that as well. A little bit inside the internal threads there just to help stop any corrosion over time. good bit around the whole race to help keep the balls in place and keep them nice and lubricated. Here 
uh, just to smear a little bit around all the bare metal surfaces. So now it's just a matter of getting all the loose ball bearings placed around the race here and then installing the top race. So I have counted that there is 15 ball bearings here. Before I remove them out of the bag. So that's all the ball bearings now sitting in the race, evenly spaced out, with a nice bit of grease in there, and just smear another nice amount of grease on the top off here, just to make sure there is plenty around all those new dry ball bearings. Well, that feels nice and smooth, feels like everything's lined up properly. Now I can just set the shims back in place and install the top cap. So I'm going to go ahead and replace, reinstall all these original shims, as obviously the new bearings are the correct size. So as the new bearings wear throughout time you can remove these shims to account for the wear of the ball bearings. So as you can see I've now got this uh, steering column reassembled with, with the new bearing assembly installed um, and a new seal there and a new top shaft. So I'm really pleased to get that job done. The steering already feels quite a bit tighter than it was just by doing that so might not even have to open the bottom end of the gearbox yet. So I'll be getting the tank back on quite soon then and hopefully be able to get the bonnet back on. So I've got the new petcock and primer mechanism installed to the tank there and I'm now going to get the tank fitted back to the tractor. So as you can see I've now got the tank reinstalled onto the Dexter here. Um, I've got the new fuel primer slash petcock installed and connected to the original pipework. Now um, I've also got the return feed there connected back up from the injectors and it's now ready to take the bonnet. So with the tank now reconnected and reinstalled I will be taking a look at putting on the dash panel here with the temperature gauge and oil pressure and charging light as well as I'll be getting the new steering wheel installed once I get this dash panel on
So that's the dash panel now installed. The upper dash that hoses the indication light and the temperature gauge. So with this now in place, I can start fitting the new top cap, which looks absolutely brilliant. And I've got a new steering wheel and top nut as well to go on. So I'll be getting those installed now. So, as you can see there, I've got the steering wheel now installed and I'm really pleased with that and I've also been busy installing the air intake pipe there and the new lower bowl on the oil bath air filter there. So that's all coming together now. I've also got myself a nice little pile of replacement grease nipples to go around the tractor so I'm going to work my way around and swap all those out So, now I've got new grease nipples installed. I've been round and flushed through all the old grease and pumped new grease into the joins to give it some fresh lubrication and force out any water that was sitting in there. Um, so yeah, that's kind of it for this video now. And I'll catch you on the next one where hopefully I'll be getting this Dexter up and running. Thanks for watching guys, see you on the next one.